her experience on building uh, dialogue systems. And today, uh, Vivian is going to read a lecture on uh, goal-oriented dialogue systems. Uh, let's greet our speaker. Okay, thank you. Okay. So today, I want to talk about goal-oriented dialogue system, and I will mention what's the difference between goal-oriented and chit-chat. Okay, we can imagine our future life is just like Iron Man's life, like we have a drivers for each person, and we can ask as drivers to help us to finish a different type of task. So let's introduce the dialogue system. Currently, we have a lot of intelligence system from different leading companies. For example, Apple uh, announced Siri in 2011, and also Google has their Google Assistant, and Microsoft has their own Cortana. And recently, Amazon created a smart speaker, which is called Echo. And within Echo, there's a assistant called Alexa, which also can help you finish tasks, for example, playing your music. And Google and Apple also announced their own smart speaker. So a lot of companies want to dig into this uh, field. But we want to think about why we need this. From our, in our daily life, daily conversation, we can do a lot of different tasks. For example, we will do chatting for, um, with our friends. So it's about talking like a human. And another one is we do a lot of, we do a lot of question for example, we call it information consumption. For this example, we, we can ask what's today's schedule, or which room is the dialogue tutorial in, or what does an NLP stands for. So there's a lot of information we want to search and get the an answer. And the third one is we want to do a lot of tasks, which we call task completion. For example, we can book a flight ticket or reserve a restaurant and also schedule a meeting with other persons. This one is task completion. And also another one is the decision support. We want to get a suggestion about the product review. So these three different type of conversation belongs to task-oriented dialogue because we do not only do the chatting, we want to finish some goal. In this intelligent assistance, they provide a lot of task oriented, playing music or booking a ticket or a schedule meeting with friends. And they also do some engaging. It's like a social chatting. For example, you can ask for a joke from the your theory or the Cortana. And today I want to focus on task oriented part. And we also need to think about why we want to use natural language to do interaction. From the net, uh, last year statistics, total population is around 7.5 billion, and there are also 3.7 billion internet users, and a lot of users are active social media users. But if you see these two numbers, the unique mobile users is around 5 billion, and also there's 2.5 billion active mobile social users, which means a lot of users use the communication channel like Facebook Messenger or um, WhatsApp. Compare these two numbers, we can know that a lot of people move their internet behavior from the original classic desktop toward the mobile device. So in this small device, the more natural and convenient input evolves towards speech. If you imagine we have a smart watch or the smart smartphone, it's not very easy to type the information just by clicking. So we can use the natural language to do interaction. It's very, it's very natural and convenient. So the formal definition for the dialogue system is they are intelligent agents which can help us finish some task more efficiently. They already be incorporated into different type of device. For example, your TV or the navigation system, like Jarvis, 
in the Iron Man movie. And this is another dialogue system, Baymax, which is the personal healthcare companion focusing only on the healthcare domain. Although it's a physical robot, but they need to in embed a good dialogue system to do the interaction. They can understand your language and try to get you the answers. Based on these two examples, we know that if we can have a good dialogue system, we can access information or finish tasks more efficiently. Let's think about an app. We can change it into a bot. A bot Okay. Hello? No? Should I need to wait? <laughs> Hi? No? I think it's no. Okay. So should I No problem, I can, okay. I can do it louder. OK, let's continue. So a bot can be responsible for a single domain, just similar to an app. Let's see an example. This is very uh, common app you may have. Like this is the beauty salon. And if you want to do the haircut, you need to collect click the button about the service and choose the haircut, and then fill in the information to make a reservation. But if you change into the bot behavior, then it becomes like this way, haircut on Saturday. The bot will try to understand the meaning behind this sentence and try to provide you the answer. I have this time available, and the user can choose one of them and then finish the reservation. What's the difference between the two? In this behavior, the user can initiate the dialogue instead of following the GUI design. For example, if you imagine you need to teach your grandpa or the, your grandma to use this interface, it will be a little bit difficult because you need to teach them. If you want to access the haircut service, you need to click this button first and then do, do a lot of things here. But if you do it in a bot way, you just like to uh, just just like calling your haircut assistant, and they will help you to reserve the time. So let's see the whole framework about the dial task oriented dialogue system. First, we need to have a speech recognition to transcribe the speech signal into text. Are there any action movie to see this weekend? Or you can also allow the user to type in the sentence by text. The first component is called language understanding, which is try to extract the semantic behind this sentence. For example, the user wants to get the movies. They want to request some movie, but they have the movie constraint. The constraint is about general and date based on this sentence. So this understanding module needs to extract the intent and slot, and I will detail this component later. The following component is called dialogue management. Based on this semantics, we can think we can have a SQL query to search the database and get the movies which can satisfy this constraint. However, if there are like hundreds of movies satisfying this constraint, do you think we can directly show it to the user? I don't think it's a good idea, right? So dialogue manager is trying to design what's the next action to do for the user so that we can do the following interaction. 
for this example, if we see hundreds of movies in a database satisfying this constraint, probably we need to decide to request additional constraint, for example, the location. Then we can narrow down the search space and find a, find a short list of the movie which may can display to the user. After we design a system action, we can generate the corresponding natural language, go back to user. And in the next turn, user will say something and we can do it iteratively. Let's see an example. If the user wants to find the eating place for Taiwanese food, how can we do the dialogue system process this request? Let's see the first component, understanding. First one is try to identify the domain. You can imagine you have a lot of database and you have a lot of information and we need to decide which database can provide information for this request. So it's very easy, we can directly do the sentence level classification and to choose this user want to do the restaurant seeking. And second, if we design a restaurant database contain information the user wants, but they can support different functionality. Find restaurant or find price or find type. You can still do the sentence classification again and to decide which intent the behind is the, this sentence belongs to. So this we call the intent detection. And the third one is flaw filling, which is different from the previous two, which are the classification tasks. In slot filling, we need to extract the constraint about the restaurant. For example, this is a table of the restaurant database. There are a lot of restaurants and their attributes. We need to extract the semantics, like good belongs to rating concept. Taiwanese belongs to type concept so that we can have this semantic frame, then generate the corresponding query and to search the database. So here we do sequence labeling in order to extract the information from the sentence. How to do that? We can tag each word with the slot label. If we use O, which means it's out of concept, if we have B, which means it's beginning of rating concept, then we can extract the, these two words corresponding to these two slots. The rating called slot, this is called the slot value, and I would also detail this all later. For the dialogue management, the first task is try to estimate the dialogue state. We call it dialogue state tracking. In the beginning of the conversation, we start from the null state. And after the user said, find a good eating place for Taiwanese food, they mention the constraint about rating and type. So it could be, we can imagine the state is transit from the null state to rating plus type state. The second term, user said, I want it near to my office they add additional constraint, which is the location. So the state move to the location rating and type state. So this is a perfect pass when we have these two sentences in the conversation. But getting the perfect pass is very difficult. Why? For example, for the first sentence, find a good eating place for turn food. It's very fast, so the we can have misrecognition or some misunderstanding. This is the correct semantics we want. However, we can get this one, like type is equal to Thai, thai food. If we have this information, we still think the user is in this dialogue state, right? But it's difficult to decide between this state or this state. If we choose the incorrect one, then the return restaurant may not satisfy the user's constraint. Also, it could be possible we cannot extract this is about the type. So we think probably
hopefully the user is in this style of state instead of this one. This is a difficult task because only one sentence we may not de we cannot decide which style of state the current utterance is in. So after we design the track the style of state, we still need to design how can we respond to the user, which we call dialog policy. We can inform something to the user or request additional constraints. Also, we can do confirmation. If we think current information is not reliable and we can use interaction to confirm some value from the user, like we are not sure about the type, so we think we can ask the type is Taiwanese or Thai food and then user can use additional dialogue turn in order to give me or correct the information I want. So after this component, we design a dial uh, the system action. Then we need to generate a natural language. This one is pretty easy. You can have the natural language or just showing this information to user or do the at ask the con constraint using natural language or at the allow the user to click in as well for confirm. Okay, so we have a basic idea about the whole framework of dialogue system. And let's see how can we use deep learning for each component. First, we need to have the domain ontology, which is very important. It's related to these two parts the database and also the language understanding. Let's consider the two sentences. The first one is about restaurant. The second one is about movie. So based on two different sentences and domains, we need to have the corresponding ontology. For example, for restaurant ontology, the target is the restaurant and they have a lot of different attributes for the restaurant. For the movie as well, we have movie and their attribute. So our understanding, understanding, in our understanding module, the semantic representation may align well with our ontology. Like each slot we need to extract should be appear in the our domain ontology database. Let's see an example. This is the movie ticket. We have the movie name, theater rating, and date, and also type. It's corresponding to this ontology. And they can support two different functionality. The first type is information access. For example, the user want to get the specific entries from the table. For example, they want to get the information about time or they want to get the information about rating, like this number. So we call it information consumption. The second one is task completion. We want to book a ticket for the user. So when the user want to find a whole row, they can satisfy the constraint. For example, this row belongs to a ticket the user want to purchase. So we need to find the entry or we need to narrow down the row in order to get the user to purchase the ticket. So in a dialogue schema, these all are domain specific attributes. We can imagine we have a lot of slots, like theater slot, rating slot, date slot, time slot, belongs to the column in our database. And also, when we do the interaction, we need to allow different type of dialogue act. Usually the classic three are inform, request, and confirm, as I mentioned before. We can also provide a test specific action. For example, you need to do some transaction like book tickets. And you can also support some uh, thank you or greeting dialogue act. But these three are the most important part. For example, when user and bot interact with each other, finding the, this person's movie 
and they ask the information about the constraint and they can have some answer. So we can imagine this user want to do request movie name and this is the slot and the value as the same as the bot which is the restaurant uh, request and release date. This we the user in can record it con uh, combine dialog act plus slot. For example, this is dialog act is request and the uh, requested slot is movie name, so the intent is request movie name, as well of the system action, request release year. Okay, then if we have the database ontology, we can move to the understanding part. During the understanding is this component, we know that we use the pipeline architecture, we do domain classification first, and then decide the intent and then extract the slot. The domain and intent classification, just like based on a sentence, we need to do the sentence level classification to decide which domain or which intent this sentence belongs to. So we can apply deep neural net to do the classification. For example, we can fit each word one by one in a RNN and then predict the utterance class label for intent or for domain. For each word, we can have the label and then we summarize the whole label to do the final decision. Or we can support this type of architecture. This RNN need to design a label after they read all word in the sentence. The research shows that this one is performed better than the previous one because it's very intuitive, because you need to dis read all sentence and then you can design the intent for a human as well. So this model can perform better than this one because if you only see two words in the beginning of the sentence, probably you cannot decide the intent class. Also for the dialogue act, classification, you can have different type of architecture, like you can use the pooling additionally with the convolution neural net. Okay, if we can do the classification, we can also use deep, deep learning to do slot filling. Based on this sentence, slot filling can be performed in two different ways. One is the sequence tagging task, like this one as I shown before, like chip belongs to price slot, center, uh, century of time belongs to area, beginning of area and internal of area. So these three words belong to the same slot. The slot is area. And another one is use the classification. It trained the classifier to decide whether this slot value pair appear in this sentence or not. So you can imagine if we have a large set of the slot, this one may not be very practical because we need to have a lot of classifier in order to do the decision. So usually we choose this type of um, sequence tagging architecture. So we can use RNN again. For LSTM, we can also do the tagging for each word and we can slightly change the architecture, allow the node can access the context from the input as well. And, and then we can consider the two directions, the forward direction and backward direction to do the tagging. Because previous studies shows that we need to read all sentence and then design the intent, right? So one research is try to read all sentences first and then do the tagging. They think they will have a better performance. So the architecture is very similar, but a little bit different. And you can also add the attention mechanism in this part and get a little bit better performance. Also, you can try to leverage different type of knowledge. For example, if we need to design a slot, probably the POS tag result may be beneficial. So we can have the we can have the multi-task learning architecture. Like this RNN 
one branch doing the POS tagging, one doing the SLA tagging. So the lower layer can be shared across different domain because different domain also have their own POS and they have different type of SLA value pair. So you can train it and try to benefit from other, other domain or other task. And the this is a recent work which we want to do SLA tagging. But when we do SLA tagging, we need to do the BIO tag, right? But it's, ve it's very difficult to decide the beginning and the internal. So how about we separate this part? We do the set segmentation first and then tag the segment. So in this part, we only have the slot or out of slot. We do, do not need to decide beginning of slot or internal of slot. So this model performed a little, a little better than the previous one. However, we previously we separated three different tests one by one and use the pipeline approach. But we can consider to join optimize the three different tasks. For example, we have the one on run. The first part is doing the slot filling. And then in the end of sentence, we design the intent. We can train slot and intent together just using one model. You can also think about this different architecture like after reading this sentence, we need to design the intent in this branch. Another branch includes the SLA feeling. But language understanding is still very challenging because this sentence seems very easy. Just send email to Bob about fishing this weekend. We can design a domain about com communication. Intent is about send email and we can extract the slot and then generate the API call correctly. However, it's a very easy single-turn conversation. Usually, the, a lot of real users want to say that. Send email to Bob. In the following sentence, are we going to fix this weekend? The first sentence is easy to do the, to extract the semantics. But the second one is more difficult. If we can, if we do not see this sentence, it's very difficult to design all words in this sentence belongs to the message content. So this is called multi-term conversation. So in order to get the correct semantic for each sentence, we need to consider the context, not only the previous one, but the whole history. So let's consider the context using memory. This is the current utterance to do the tagging. If we can store the whole history here, and also build a vector for each sentence, we can also estimate the relation between the current one and the previous one as the attention distribution. Then the sum, this is the summary of the history, and we can fit this vector into this component in order to allow the model to consider the context and get a better performance. Yes, this is another issue, like we need to design current sentence is the first term for the task or the following follow up the sentence for the previous uh, task. Because it could be possible we just do it uh, for a while and we live for a while and we want to go back to our previous interaction. So it's very difficult to design this is the first sentence in the conversation or this uh, follow-up sentence uh, corresponding to the previous interaction. So this is another research topic to design the, like the, whether this task is end or not.
Okay, let um, let me give you an example. For example, if you want to um, purchase the flight ticket and then reserve the hotel in, at at the tourist place, then these two domain co is related to each other, right? So you need to purchase the flight ticket and then check the hotel availability and then go back to the ticket search. It will go back and forth. So probably you, you don't want to restart again. You want to search some information in the middle and then search another one and then go back. So, okay, so we need to decide this. But current bot cannot handle this complicated situation and Hopefully, we we want our human, like the virtual agent, can behave like a human assistant, just like can do this uh, interaction in this way. So in this, uh, uh, we can analyze the attention. For example, if we want to do understanding for this sentence, based on the previous uh, model, they can decide which sentence is related to this one and have the attention weight. For example, this sentence is related to this one, and this one, and this one as well. And this one have the highest attention. And then we can have a better understanding for this sentence. So after we do the understanding, we also need to check the dialogue state. So it corresponds to this component. In this conversation, the yellow one is the user, uh, red one is the agent. We, we, after we have the understanding result, we need to merge the information and then we can create a query. So we call dialogue state tracking. This is the observation we see. And we need to estimate the dialogue state. It is the, what the user wants, dialogue state tracking. Let's see an example why this component is important. How many, can I help you? This person want to purchase a uh, book a table at the restaurant for five. In the beginning, five is ambiguous. We cannot decide if five is about number of people or time. But if we know the user say they, there are three people, then the number of people is three and the confidence score increased into a 0.8. So the time information for five is need to increase to 0 0.8. Because if this is the number of people, this, five, then this information is about the time. But if we do not track the whole information using dialogue state tracking, we cannot adjust the confidence score for this information. Then we also think this ambiguous. So how can we do that? In deep neural net, we can automatically extract the feature here. This is the current turn. We need to estimate the dialogue state. So we extract the feature from the previous turns. And then just do the estimation. We can estimate a slot value distribution using this architecture. So you can imagine DNA is not enough we can consider to use the RNN because they have the temporal sequence. So we can allow different type of information propagate from different uh, memory and belief. Then estimate the dialogue and the belief of the dialogue state. This one is more popular, which is use recurrent neural net again, and also the CNN. For each dialogue turn, including user turn and the system turn. And we need to estimate the dialogue state, like the output layer here. So within the user turn and the system turn, it used the CNN to extract the sentence representation as a vector and then do the classification. Same as this one, it's called neural belief tracker. It's also considered a system output user utterance and the candidate in the database and to do the estimation. Uh, uh, until now, we have five year competition. It's about dialogue state tracking challenge. They have different type of conversation 
and different domain. And you can see this example, this is the first year. First year, we need to estimate the dialogue state based on the speech recognition. Like this about the bus route. But if the user say 61A, it's very difficult to recognize correctly um, when, when the speech recognition is not very good and also in the a noisy environment and they need to estimate this dialogue state in a correct way. And for the recent one, which is about human-human conversation, and uh, our dialogue state is like the user want to do some hotel seeking, and after you look at this conversation, you can fully understand why this belongs to this dialogue state. So they provide a lot of conversation and uh, annotated dialogue state and allow the researcher to do dialogue state tracking. Okay, then a more difficult one is try to design a dialogue policy. It's also in this component. What's the dialogue policy? Based on the same e example, dialogue policy is try to design how can we react the user based on the conversation until now? So we estimate the dialogue state here, but based on what the user wants, we need to decide the system, uh, what the system is saying. For example, we call it dialogue policy optimization. Let's see an example. Why we need to use a different learning manner. Previously, we used a lot of supervised learning, but this interaction is totally different. It's related to reinforcement learning, but why? In a supervised approach, if we want to train the agent, we need to provide it a lot of input and output pair. Like when the user say hello, you need to say hi. When the user say bye-bye, you need to say goodbye. After we have a lot of input-output pair, then we can do the supervised learning, right? But it's very difficult to, it's impossible to enumerate the possible, all possible input and output in the natural language. So we need to allow this agent to be independent, allow it to interact with the user directly. After the interaction, the user gets mad, so the agent need to revise their dialogue policy in order to get better interaction. So this we call reinforcement learning. Supervised learning is like learning from a teacher, like uh, we are in the school. But reinforcement learning is more um, practic practical, like we need to learn from critics. So why we need to formulate this into a reinforcement learning framework? because users say something, after we understand, we need to decide the action, but we don't know this action is good or not good. After the conversation finished, we can get the user's feedback. We call it reward. So user is like an environment to do interaction with our agent. Agent need to make a decision for each dialogue turn. And each turn, we need to select action which can maximize this reward. The reward can be the user's satisfaction or the success, whether this task is success, successful or not. Like whether the user accept the ticket we purchased for them. So let's think we need to define a reward function. Usually, when the conversation is successful, we can give them a large reward because we want the conversation is successful. However, we want it as shorter as possible because we don't want it for each turn you need to do the conference and the user may not have patience to provide a lot of conference to the system. So we give them a penalty if the system needs to use additional turn. Then in order to maximize the reward, they will make the conversation successful and try to do as soon as possible, finish it as soon as possible. 
but it requires the domain knowledge. So usually, we need to have a simulated user to as an environment, and we can interact with this simulated user. Also, we can pay some user to do interaction with our system, and then we can train. But it's very difficult to directly train from real user. Why? Because in the beginning, our system may perform very poor. So real user may not have patience to use your poor system. So usually, before deployment, we will build a user simulator to acquire the information and to train our system. And when our system gets a reasonable performance, we just deploy to the real user and train on online tra using online training to train with the real user. So this is our architecture. We need to build this environment, which we call user simulation. And then we can have an interaction. We, after we collect a lot of conversation, and the system can try to improve their own dialogue policy and to have better performance. So this work just want to use deep neural net to do the task completion bot. They train a language understanding and natural language generation module using supervised way and connect with the dialogue policy learning component and make this interaction enable and then they can have the natural language from the user simulation and then train the dialogue policy return to the user. And then we can apply the any type of reinforcement learning method to train the whole component, all component here, especially for the dialogue manager. So the idea is we use supervised learning to train this small component and then enable reinforcement learning for end-to-end -end training. Let's see the result of this reinforcement learning based agent. If we want to purchase the the user want to purchase the movie ticket for uh, at this time and a specific location, this is the rule based system. Usually they need to access the acquire the information one by one. But here there are a lot of slots the user do not care about the value. So if we consider if we interact with this user a lot, then we will learn how to skip the conversation. For example, if one the user one like uh, always care about location, user two always care about the price, then we need to ask the location for the user one and ask price first for the user two. So we need to do different interaction. So this is how reinforcement learning agent doing. They can finish the ticket booking using a shorter conversation. They need to, they, they can know which conversation can be skipped and then we still can get the correct ticket booking. So we can have better efficiency. And then for the another example is about deep, uh, mis misrecognition, for example here, the user say 715, but it misrecognized into 750. If the real rule-based system do not handle this uh, revising, then they will pu purchase the, difficult, uh, the incorrect ticket for the user. But the reinforcement learning will try to do the more ro in the robust interaction. They will mention the information in the middle of the conversation and try to help the user to correct the information and then finally they can purchase the correct ticket. So we can have the better robustness. Okay. In the generation is a less component. After we design the action, we can generate the natural language. So this is mapping from the semantic into the natural language. It's very easy and very practical to directly use the template-based NLG. You can define a lot of semantic and the corresponding natural language. The pros include it's very simple and error-free and easy to control. So a lot of product use template-based. And if you think it's very time-consuming and also 
the scalability is very poor and the interaction is just the same, it's very boring, you can consider to use the learning based approach. This is the RNN based NLG. For example, we want to generate a sentence here based on this semantics. We can do the legs wise and then fit the semantic vector into this RN and try to allow the set, uh, allow the model to output the sentence one by output the word one by one. But it has some problem about repetition because the we fit the semantic friend into this model. So when it generate the word, it always want to cover the semantics you mentioned. Like Ding Tai Fung is a child friendly restaurant and also allows kids. It's a semantic repetition, it's not necessary. So we want to handle this issue. The good way is to try to use the gating mechanism or the attention. This is very popular research work. They just use the LSTN gate. They add another cell which, we, which is called dialogue act cell. In this semantic vector, originally it indicates the information they want to inform, like the restaurant name and the type, uh, restaurant type. So th there are two one here corresponding to these two information. If you train the, when you tr output the word one by one, they will gradually update this semantic friend. It's called dialogue act cell. They will update it, and then if they mention the restaurant name, then this number should become zero so that the following words may not cover the same semantics. So they can directly train in end-to-end -end manner. So they will automatically decide how to do the update and how to generate the word and to avoid the semantic repetition. So you just use the gating mechanism is easily to control the semantics. But there's also a lot of issue in natural language generation. For example, usually they will generate a shorter sem sentence because it's it's more it's easy to do the maximi to do the optimization. And it it could generate some grammatically incorrect sentence. But how can we con to how can we address this issue? We can consider some linguistic patterns. In this uh, in this work, they use the very similar approach in encoder and decoder. But in the decoder, they have de a lot of layer to decode based on different linguistic pattern. For example, they will generate the noun and pronoun first, and then generate the verb, and then generate the others. And then finally, they can have a longer sentence and also probably um, grammatically correct, just like uh, children learn how to speak. In the beginning, they just learn the noun, like the content word, and they add more information to the sentence. Okay, okay. After that, we'll mention some recent trend on dialogue learning. They have two different direction. One is about coverage. One is about complexity. Currently, we do a lot of single domain dialogue system, but we want to extend to the multi-domain. And in the very uh, in the late future, probably we can have an open domain system, but it's very difficult. How can we extend our intent to another domain, unseen domain? For example, if we have a node domain and a setting domain, and we add additional domain, which is the calendar domain, we do not have any data for this domain, but we have a trench node and trench setting sentence in our training as our training data. Is it possible to borrow the information about trench in these two domains and extend to the calendar domain. Because if you want to trench calendar, probably the sentence may be very similar to the trench note, like adjust my calendar. So I think the dialogue act information can be shared across different domain. And also for policy. For three different domains, we can learn the policy 
one by one. But if we build a committee model to collect all information within this committee model, usually when we do the policy learning, this is a single policy and uh, domain policy curve. But if we consider committee can provide us some useful cues, then the committee then our learning curve can become this line. We can learn faster and probably have the, a little bit better performance because other domain information can borrow to our domain. So we can see that different domain information can also be shared for the policy. Consider another dimension, complexity. Currently, we focus on a lot of knowledge-based system like we add a lot of turn. And we consider whether our system can handle common sense. Like I've got the code, what do I do? It's very difficult. And finally, we want them having empathy. It's still very difficult because even for human, it's a difficult task. In the dialogue system, language is very ambiguous. Let's see an example. Thank you, Vivian. We, want, we know the user wants to do communication, but we don't know they want to do email conversation or message conversation, right? Usually, user preference matters because some users prefer message to email and some, other, some prefer another. However, based on a same person, probably you may have different intent. For example, if you take a picture first, then you say, send to Vivian. Probably you will use the message, and you, it's more likely to use message to send the photo. But if you use Excel to create some uh, file, probably you want to send to Vivian using email. So even for same person, they have different context. You may have different intent. So we want to use the behavior pattern in history to benefit the intent prediction. But it's a very uh, late future we want to do because as a, hum, hum, uh, as a hum, human assistant, they can do high level intention understanding. But how the system can do? If we e monitor the user behavior when using the app, they find restaurant using this app and check the restaurant location using another app and the contact person using the third app and listen to some music. If we monitor this app usage sequence, we will find that these three apps belong to the same high level goal. They want to schedule lunch with Vivian. So if, if we only if the user only sees schedule lunch with Vivian, a human assistant should be able to decompose into three different domains. The first domain is the restaurant. They will ask you, what kind of restaurant do you prefer? And they will tell you the distance using this domain. And then they will uh, actively ask you whether you need to send the um, restaurant information to that person you want to meet. So we don't want to do different domain one by one. We want our assistant can be very smart and can automatically decompose this high level intention into several domains and try to plan the dialogue in a consistent way. But it's very difficult. Finally, the empathy is also difficult. This work is using emotion recognizer to enable the empathy in the dialogue system. They can recognize the emotion based on text, speech, and vision, and uh, try to provide a different interaction based on the emotion estimation. Okay, so to summarize the challenge, the human machine interface is a hot topic, but uh, a lot of components need to be integrated. And also, most of the safely art technology are based on DNN, which means we, we need to label a lot of data so that we can train our deep neural net model. But the good thing is we have a lot of framework and model are av available online. We can directly borrow the good model from 
um, other person's GitHub and to train our model using our data. And another task is very important and I think it's, um, it's very practical to do the adaptation, the fast domain adaptation. If you build a model for single domain and you want to build an, for another domain, you need to collect the whole data and to train it again. No, I think it's better to adapt the original model to this domain and then try to get more and more data. You can try to, and you can consider how to use the rule in the trained domain and then just use the scarce data to enable the new domain. And reasoning is very difficult and for current product, there's no reasoning function. But for the human, we can do reasoning. We know the current sentence is related to previous one, so we can have the reasoning step. But for the system, it's um, currently we do not have this function and very difficult because we still need, need well, we also need to know how humans do reasoning. For data collection and analy an analysis is important. And last one is our task-oriented system is very complex. They include a lot of components. So if one component get the error, then the following component will ha still have, have more error. The error will propagate to affect the final performance. But the good thing is we can use the interaction to correct the error, like we can confirm and then try to correct the error from the previous component. But each component need to have very good performance and the final dialog system can have better interaction result. So it's a good, it's, ve it's very challenging, but it's worth to try. Okay. So for the take home message is this framework. We, kn we know how to do the understanding to extract the intent and also the blood. For the dialogue manager, we need to estimate the dialogue state. And then based on the dialogue state, we need to design the dialogue policy, which can maximize the final reward. The reward uh, referred to the user satisfaction, but it's very difficult to get. So we usually use the objective measurement, which is the test whether this conversation is successful or not. And generate the natural language. You can use the template based or the learning based. You can, if you use the learning based, you may have very diverse sentence corresponding to different, uh, the, the same um, system action. Okay. Okay, thank you everyone. So do you have any question? I'm ready for answering. you mean when you want to enable the reinforcement learning to improve the system performance if the some information is incorrect or okay oh you mean the use of may not be willing to give this score or 
or this not consistent? Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, it's a very good and very practical question. Uh, usually, we will collect, because when we do reinforcement learning, we need to have an experience pool, right? And in this pool, we can, uh, first we can create some rule-based system and to collect some, probably they just, uh, only have um, like only some conversation can be success successful, but we can store this successful conversation into our experience pool, and then the fail failure one then we just uh, ignore that. Then we can replay this successful conversation and to allow the model to be more likely to success using observing this information. And I, did I get the answer? Um, yeah, another, another solution is try to collect the, um, try to train the dialogue management using supervised learning first, and then enable reinforcement learning later. Um, no, for supervised learning, you can monitor the human-human conversation. For example, if you have a user and you can have a human uh, agent to respond to the user, right? So definitely not not every time, but usually the conversation can be successful because the agent is a human agent. Like we can collect some successful conversation and use this conversation to train our system first. And then they, the system can have higher probability to get a success if they directly follow this synced conversation. And then we enable the reinforcement learning to explore the unseen conversation, like the unseen uh, request or the different type of interaction. You mean how to optimize? Yeah. Um, usually, we consider we need to finish one conversation. Then, based on a finished conversation, we can and it we treat it as a sample. So we have like uh, one hundred samples, which means one hundred conversation. And for each conversation, they have the understanding and the policy for each turn. Then we use reinforcement learning to optimize the, to, to change the dialogue policy and then to allow it to get a better interaction and try to get higher reward because the reward will be based on the success rate and also the length of the conversation. So if the, we change the dialogue policy, we, can, we may have the higher or lower reward. And the model can e explore this direction is better or another direction is better. Is it? Um, did I answer that?
Oh, you mean the unseen behavior or the seen behavior? I think for unseen, reinforced learning is try to explore diff, uh, the, the action they never used before. So using reinforced learning, can, we can explore different, uh, the new interaction. But if you only use the supervised learning, they will try to choose the one they may have the most, the highest likelihood to, uh, to align with the training data. So that's why I think using reinforced learning may be beneficial if you have a lot of unseen behavior. Because in the da uh, policy learning, reinforced learning will have, like you, if you use the exploration technique, you can set zero, uh, zero point, um, like 0.5% exploration rate. That means 95% they will choose the thing, already have r uh, the, the thing action, but they have 5% probability to choose one they never used before. Then if they choose this one, they will explore the possibility whether this one can success or get a higher reward. If they get higher reward, then next time they know this pass is better than the already seen pass. You mean multiple like the domain? Yes. Um, there's um, I I remember last year there's a paper about multi-domain um, dialogue manager, which consider to use the hierarchical reinforcement learning, like they have a dialogue manager for each domain, and they also have a global dialogue manager. Global one is to design which domain the current sentence is in. Then they, they you will move to the sub, like the domain specific dialogue manager, and dialogue manager will do the interaction, and they have an, another action is try to get out of this domain. So they will th this, for example, you have three domain, and also a global dialogue manager. So you have four different dialogue um, dialogue manager. They will interact with each other and train together and try to learn the how to skip from one domain to another. But it's very difficult to train. Mm. But if you can define the interaction pretty well and collect the reasonable amount of data, probably it's also fine to do the multi-domain interaction. Um, the quality of the system for each component of the whole. You mean some type of language the system cannot correctly understand? Oh, it's it's common, but the solution is try to collect more data and put in the put in our training data to tr to train each component. Oh. Um, so for the understanding only or for the whole conversation? I think for whole, for test oriented, we usually use the test success rate. For example, for 100 conversation, 
how many conversation can be successful. Which means if we do the uh, movie ticket booking, how many ticket we can the, the user want to purchase? Yes, it's um, for test oriented. It's relatively easy to get it without human rating because if the human finish the transaction, then we can think the conversation should be successful, right? Otherwise, they may not purchase the ticket. If the ticket is not, they uh, they won't. We just treat it as a failed yeah, conversation. But, mm. but for measurement, no, if the human do not purchase the ticket, then we treat it fail. So for five conversation, if only one the human finished the ticket purchase, then we only have the 20% success rate. So others we treated, we failed the four, uh, rest four conversation. So in this situation, the human will refuse to pay to make a payment, right? If they see... Then we treat it fail. Because in the... Um, then, because the last uh, last sentence of the conversation, we should mention all information about this ticket. Other, uh, even we do not have the payment transaction, then we still need to mention all information about this ticket in the last sentence, right? So the user will say, "Oh, I can accept it," or they they will do the final confirm. Here? Oh, here. Yeah. We, um, for this one, because this ticket booking, right? So if we have this sentence, then the user did not accept the information here. They say no, then it means this conversation failed. This is the rule base, so they stop. So in the framework, in the reinforcement learning, here, here, here. In the beginning, we need to def have the user go first. If we build this user simulation, we need to sample a user go. And after the conversation finished, we will check the purchase the ticket 
and the user go whether they match to each other. If they match, we think this conversation is successful. Otherwise, we think it's failed. You mean the rule base or the rule base is not follow uh, the does not follow this design. Rule base just you think uh, we need to have a, a priority of the slot seeking. Then we ask each slot and then we directly take the value we have. Then we purchase it. So you uh, it's it's possible there some conversation may fail. But using reinforced learning in the training, we can control. We can we know whether this conversation su is successful or not. But I think you, uh, in your situation, you mentioned is about interact with the real user. How can we get the feedback for for the for the whole conversation? I think for the test oriented, usually you will have a uh, signal. Um, for example, for like the payment or if the after the whole conversation you can have like the button whether they want to purchase or not or whether they think this information is correct or not we still need to get this one Yes, and another uh, research direction is try to estimate whether this dialogue is good or not. Then y you can train it as a supervised way. And based on this, if uh, they will think probably the user have like the positive sentence after the ag agent, then I, the classifier will think this conversation can have higher reward because they think it's more possible this conversation is successful. They purchased the correct ticket. But uh, it's, it's more intuitive to directly provide the, to when we interact with the real user in the test-oriented uh, type system, usually we will finish some task, right? So this task will contain some transaction or some for example, the ticket booking or the restaurant booking, you, you, you need to get the information from the user, say, OK, then we can finish this conversation. And if they think, OK, after your final sentence, then we think this conversation should be successful. You mean if there's no external access or the API or but for test oriented you need to um, ad yes otherwise it's it do not belong it does not belong to test oriented because after all you want to create some query or like uh, call some API or do something. So it's based on this signal, we can check whether this success or not. So for the chit chat one, it's more difficult because we do not know whether the user satisfied this conversation or not. So for chit chat, we usually need to have the signal from the hu human rating, or we can a lot um, for the chit chat. A lot of people use the length of the conversation as the reward. Because if you 
once the user engage in this conversation, probably we think they will continue the conversation, so longer is better. So this is for the chit chat setting, but for the test oriented, we need to finish a task, like do some transaction or do some API call. Yes, for some example I showed in very um, early slide, it's about like the, the like a suggestion. For that one, it's also t belong to test oriented. But when user get an uh, information, it's possible the user satisfied this information, but they just gone. They just leave. They, because they already got this information, they just leave. So we cannot measure whether this conversation is successful or not. In this situation, it's possible, but we can just, um, so it's more difficult to train for the real human, but we can also get this information from reinforcement learning based user because we build a simulated user. The simulated user is fully controlled. So we can check whether the information is correct or not if we build our simulated one. Yes, it, it's possible, and also it's it's by it depends on your design, because you can have you can allow the user say multiple sentences and do one turn interaction, but it will be more difficult because if you one dialogue turn include more sentences, then understanding become difficult. Right, so. Why the current product just allow you to do one sentence interaction? Because it's relatively easy to get the correct understanding. Then they can ask the information one by one. Then uh, allow the conversation as easy as possible. But it's, it's, I think it's reasonable to consider how can we handle the multiple sentence in a one dialogue turn. Because in a real human, usually we depend on the situation. Sometimes we will answer directly, or sometimes we'll wait for a, like a long pause or some domain is finished. Oh yes, yes. For for this minor, uh, con like we add more constraint. It's it's okay. Yes, because you current product usually define a like the pause, and then they do the understanding. So if you do not have very long pause, probably they will consider it is a single utterance, mm -hmm. because single utterance may contain multiple sentences or like it's like a phrase add, uh, adding with the previous one. Yes, yes, it's, it's possible. That's why we n just need to allow the agent only do one uh, like dialogue act. Uh, it's 
one time. Yes, like request one, but you can request one and inform multiple because it's more natural. Like we add one constraint, but we also give you what I know right uh, until now. But the request should only appear once because it, otherwise in the reinforcement they will learn to try to ask all information in one time, but it doesn't make sense. It's a good question. If you want to cover this type of request, it's also possible. Then you need to collect the data for this one as well. Then if you collect the data for this one and also annotate this type of like query type uh, conversation, then we can still train it. But it will be a little. Um, it will be ambiguous if like one slot, uh, two different slot contain same information because it's possible, right? For example, um, like the movie name may be the same as the, like the time, maybe nine, something. Then they, if the user only men mention the name and then the time, then we may not be able to distinguish whether this belongs to the movie name or the time, just like the Book the, um, book the table for five, then we don't know five belongs to time or number of people. So if you only use the query type of conversation, it's more ambiguous. But we can still handle this one if you collect this data and try to use the interaction to confirm. And we can ask, because we know this information may belong to these two, Slot. So we will ask, do you mean uh, the movie name or do you mean by the time? Then we can try to get the interaction correct. Okay, I think it depends on the in whether you are sp speaking or just typing. Because when we do typing, we want to save our time, so usually we just type the keyword. But when you do, when you, you are speaking, probably it's more natural and, if, and I think it's more natural to use the natural language, the whole sentence, like w I want to do the ticket, like just calling the human, we want to book the ticket, and we may not say, oh, uh, depot to 9 p.m. It's a little bit weird. So it depends on the situation. Yes, but currently they, mm, we do not distinguish it them because we want our bot can do in two different ways. Because you sometimes you are speaking, sometimes you are typing, and we may may not know that. Mm.
can you repeat it? Slot. It's a it's a research topic, and there are some uh, work trying to tackle this task. Like based on a lot of human human conversation, how can we extract the the ontology? Like which semantic slot should be in our database, and then we can collect the knowledge base, and then try to build a a bot for this domain. But currently, I find it's very difficult because for the human human conversation, because you know the, the agent is a human agent, so you will have very, very complex conversation. Then, based on this complex interaction, maybe we can extract some um, main topics or some very important slot, but need to. Um, investigate the uh, all intent within this conversation still need still request the human annotator like we cannot have the fully unsupervised model to do the not uh, ontology building we still need the human to revise the ontology learn the ontology or to add the dom domain specific knowledge to this ontology otherwise they will be very poor, may not be used in the practical way. Mm. And also, I need to also mention, I think why the user will use the query style speech to do the bot interaction, because we, we were already trained by the search engine. Before the before search engine appear, probably no one will do this type of interaction, but we already trained with the search engine, so we just mentioned the keyword. That's, mm, that's still an issue. So the ultimate goal of the dialogue system is try to go back to the original how people saying, and we want to behave like a human. Then we just assume our input is the natural language. So I think if you have additional question, I can answer offline. So thank you, everybody. <laughs>